So today's spirit animal contestant is this guy, Amblyorhynchus cristatus, or you know him by his common name, the Galapagos marine iguana. And um, yesterday, right, we had Phalus concolor was our animal of the day. And we learned about how um, scientific names are given, right, to animals to get rid of confusion. Um, and Linnaeus just focused on the last, uh, I guess, the last part of the, the address, if, so to speak, on uh, the genus and species name. All right. But um, there are other levels of classification. And, and um, it's quite obvious, right, that these guys are iguanas. That's their family, the family of iguanas. They have relatives, right, that look like this, that are also iguanas, but they are, they are not the same. They're different species. Not only, not only are they different species, they're also different genuses, all right? And then, of course, um, they have everything above are similarities. There's, they're squamites. That means they kind of like are squatty, like uh, alligators. They're reptiles. They're chordates. They have uh, backbones. Animals, and of course, their cells have, have, um, nucleuses. All right. So our animal of today, the Galapagos, the only marine lizard on Earth, right, is a good an animal to start learning about what we call the genetic address. Mr. Collins. <laughs> So in the old days, we used to like to send letters to people. Still works, folks. U.S. Postal Service, mail. But uh, you probably know that if you wanted to get something important to Mrs. Wade and you put it in an envelope, you have to give it the correct address, right? It would have to say to who it's for, Mrs. Wade. And then let's see what else you would need. You would need the number of the house. You would need the name of the road. You probably need the name of the town and the state in which it, were, it was in, along with the zip code, which designates kind of what part of the town it's in. And then um, you might even need, if you're sending, if she lives in a different country, you might even need to indicate the country that it's in. So there's, there's a whole layers of stuff that you have to put in order to locate Mrs. Waite. And by the way, it was really nice of you to send her that card. Okay. So if that makes sense to you, right? Like Mrs. Waite, this is her place, her place, right? Um, one of the things that Carlos Linnaeus, if you remember from yesterday, one of the things he was into was, was let's identify every organism's place. Now, not really a physical place, but more of where do they fit in relation to every other organism? So I like to refer to this as the genetic address, all right? So each different species has a different genetic address. That is, each different species has a room, in a house, on a street, in a town, in a state, in a country, in a continent, on a planet, I guess, <laughs> right? right? So here, let's see. Um, let's think of it this way, right? Yesterday, we learned our animal of the day was Phalus concolor. Phalus concolor is the species. Now its genus was called Phalus. So it lives in a house with other things like it, but they're in different rooms. Okay, but they live really close together, genetically. Now, obviously these guys are all cat-like things, but right next door are the you know, cheetahs and the lions uh, and the lynxes and stuff like that. So that means um, these guys live on the same street. They have as much in common and, you know, like I guess you could say like, hey, your house cat has more in common with um, a mountain lion than it does with a lion lion. Even though they're both cats, right? These guys have more genes in common, so they're in the same house. And then, of course, closely related, but totally different, are the canines, right? The canines are have a lot of similarities, but they're definitely not cats, right? They're dogs. So it's like they just live on a different street. Hopefully, uh, this is making sense to you, right? So yesterday we did, we talked about the Phalus concolor or the, um, the mountain lion, the puma, the igmu. 
They're members of a family, family of cats, right? Family of cats, all right. So we could give every organism an address. We can give them its scientific name. We can also designate what family it's in, but there's some other levels of classification as well, all right? Um, Linnaeus looked at the bottom two, general and specific. But now we've just mentioned the family, but there's other levels, right? The biggest level, like the most general level, we call the domain, the domain, right? And the first thing you look at is, okay, what are their cells built like? Do they have nucleuses or not? And if they don't have nucleuses, what are their cell membranes like? And so there are only three ways. These are like the three most basic ways a living thing can exist. By the way, you and I are in the eukarya. That means we have, because we have nucleuses, we have more in common with a paramecium than we do with strep. And the next level would be, okay, kingdom. So um, you and I are in the kingdom of animals. So we have more in common with other things that move and eat. Like we have more in common with snails than we do with oak trees. Now, of all the animals, we are in the phylum of chordates, which means you and I have more in common with, you know, ducks and snakes because we have backbones and a nerve, a spinal cord than we do with, uh, I don't know, let's say, than we do with um, an earthworm, right? And then of all the chordates, we're in the class, class of mammals. That is, of all the things with backbones, we're in the group that's warm-blooded, that is, maintain a constant body temperature, um, usually has fur, and then, of course, the key characteristic for mammal is to nurse their young with milk. So that means that you and I have more in common with a whale than we do with a shark. Now, of all the, of all the mammals, we're in the... Um, order of primates, order primates. Primates are those mammals that can do this. There's a whole bunch of them, but that means we have more in common with a gibbon than we do with a kitty cat, right? Kitty, your cat can't do that. And of all the primates, we're in the um, family oops, of hominids. That is primates that can do this, but the ones that don't have tails, all right? So we have more in common with other hominids than we do with other primates. Like you have more in common with a gorilla than you do with a spider monkey or a lemur. <clears throat> and then of all the hominids, we're, right? There's there are not that many hominids on the planet. There are like six species total, right? Six, we're just one of six species. There's two pans, there's two pongos, and there's one gorilla. And then of course, one species of, of homo. We're in a genus of homo. Homo, um, and we're the only species in the genus at this time, homo sapiens. Now, you know, we're all exactly the same. This means we all have the same exact genes, but you can tell just by looking at people that we don't all have the same exact alleles of these genes. What makes you the same species, we all have the same exact genetic address, okay? But you might look a little different from each other because of the alleles you have for those genes, all right? So we're alone in our house right now, the homos. There are not many of us, or I mean, there's 7 billion of us, but they're not only one species of us, right? Our next closest neighbor genetically are the pans, there's two of them. There's pan troglodytes and pan paniscus. The troglodytes, sometimes we call uh, chimpanzees. Pan paniscus, we call the bonobos. Um, and we all live on the same street, hominid street, also on the street of the orangutans and the gorilla. And gorillas are like us. There's only one genus. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean it's always been that way. If you look at the fossil record, there have been other homos, other members of our genus in the house with us. Um, uh, but they've all gone extinct. 
right? They've all gone extinct. And uh, we know they're there because they left behind fossils, right? They left behind fossils. And of course, the big debate amongst taxonomists is how different were they if, we, if they're not around now to study? How many differences does it take? Like for a while, people were pretty sure Neanderthalus was a different species, but now there's evidence that uh, Homo Neanderthalus was actually a Homo sapiens, just um, like a subspecies. Anyway, it gets kind of confusing with taxonomists because as new evidence pops up, relationships change, especially with things that are extinct. All right, so uh, let's go back to today's animal of the day. The marine iguana is related to the land iguana, right? They're both iguanas, they're both in the same family. And it's pretty evident at the family level, right? There's like a certain look, like we saw the family of cats, that kind of thing, all right? So that's, that's their genetic relationship. It's like they live on the same street, but in different houses. It's like they have the same relationship as Mrs. Waite does with an orangutan, right? They live on the same street, but in different houses. So you could think of a marine iguana and a Galapagos land iguana are as genetically similar as an orangutan and a people. They obviously are similar, but they are not the same thing. They probably have uh, quite a few differences. All right, so hopefully that makes sense when we talk about genetic address.